Welcome back to the Skid Factory. Uh, you've been gone, but the VL hasn't gone anywhere. It's still sitting here waiting for its engine to be reinserted. Uh, now that it's got a red wrinkle rocker cover on it, I'm sure it's very keen to have it back in the bay. So let's get into it. We have placed some bubble wrap in between the valve cover and the engine crane to prevent any marks on the freshly painted wrinkle red. The engine is removed from the engine stand so that we can now refit the flex plate. Once it's been tightened, all that's left to do is lower the engine down into the bay. There's only one thing better in this world than a cold lemon squash. It's not better, but it's pretty good. I told you it would fit. Look at that. Pro job. Factory low mount goodness. The standard gearbox has been swapped out with a built replacement which was dismantled and inspected before it arrived at the workshop. Partnered with a 3800 RPM stall converter, this combo has been proven time and time again for an easy going street setup. Four converter bolts are installed and tightened up one by one. The gearbox crossmember then receives some new mounts and then bolted up to the rear of the gearbox. We've got the trusty RB30 back in the engine bay, fits sweet as it should since that's where it came from. Transmission's in, that all bolted up fine as well. Uh, it's got the new box in it with the, that's been rebuilt, it's a manualised version. Tail shaft's in, so we're all good to go under there. Uh, so we move back up the top now, I've uh, thrown the plenum on to uh, just size up wiring and things like that and also put this uh, throttle cable anchor on it. Um, Woody had to have a day off to MC at the taxidermy convention, so um, I did the wiring while he was away, uh, and um, that's actually ready to go back in. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, so now it's down to starting to do the creative stuff like uh, make intercooler pipes and make all that sort of stuff fit. Here's the completed wiring loom. I uh, didn't really bother filming it all because um, your mates always complain about it. My mates? Yeah, your mates on the comments section. 
it's, it's too boring. They're your mates, too, anyway. Uh So we're using, we've actually used the factory wiring loom. Uh, as I said, it was in perfectly good condition because the car's hardly done any Ks. Um, and I've cut off the, the connector and re-pinned it onto a Haltech connector. So this is an Elite 750. The ECU is, it's virtually built specifically for uh, six cylinder engines. Um, you can use it on a four cylinder, of course, um, but it's, it's sort of spec'd for RBs, JZs, that sort of thing. Um, it has um, variable cam timing capability for um, one and two JZ VVTs uh, built into it as well. So you also, if you wanted to use a four cylinder with VVT, you do need to upgrade to that because the 550 won't do that. So um, good ECU, built for the purpose. Very simple, single plug. Uh, it's got plenty enough gear uh, inputs and outputs for this engine because it is quite a simple old engine. It's got closed loop um, idle control and boost control, all those things. We've got a wideband uh, WB1 plugged into it. Uh, perfect partner for the ECU, makes everything work really well. Uh, so I've added a few extra connectors to the, to the loom that it didn't have. Um, we've got boost control, we've got the wideband. I've integrated it uh, as I like to do since I've got the looms apart rather than having all these separate looms running. Uh, that's the pressure sensor hose. It's got an inboard pressure sensor, so they're very accurate. You might as well use it if you're running under 20 pound. Uh, we've got an oil pressure sensor, because RB, and RBs like to not have oil pressure sometimes, so uh, that's gonna be engine protection. We'll shut the engine down if, in the event of an oil, oil pressure fault, uh, pump failure or whatever, whatever RBs tend to do. Uh, the rest of the stuff's pretty standard. So of course, flex fuel. May as well utilize it, the capabilities. Uh, Haltech flex fuel is exceptionally well set up. Um, so you can have the best of both worlds. We've changed the coil from a separate, uh, like power transistor, power transistor igniter and a coil unit um, to an LS type coil. Um, much more powerful, um, can put bulk dwell into them and stuff. The older style ones are, have a limit, so I was advised to change it, so we did. Uh, and other than that, we've just got our crank angle sensor, which is pretty standard stuff, um, and we've just changed the throttle position to that forward throttle body and the idle control as well. So it's all ready to go in, nice and simple. We'll feed it back in. It's got this elaborate plug that is like nothing I've ever seen before going through the firewall. Um, I've had to cut that open to get the actual loom out of it because it was sort of bonded in there. Uh, and then we've just glued it back shut again. And I've also just put a, uh, a tube through the middle of the, the um, firewall grommet to run the, um, the vacuum signal through to the ECU. Just so this doesn't have any chance of getting crushed in the loom. So, um, it's not a bad idea either. So it's ready to throw back in. Goodness. So this is what is referred to as a drop box. Um, they make them for VL or oh, Commodores. Um, what it does is it allows you to fit a shifter like this, so like a B&M brace type shifter, uh, into a Commodore up to VS, I think it is, um, and it drops it down into the inside the um, cavity of the floor and just allows the, that part of the stick to poke out. So um, Tom got this shifter with, with his transmission and he was going to use it 
um, and we were going to use this box with it, um, but he's since changed his mind and he just wants to keep the interior fairly standard looking, so um, we've just retained the original shifter now. But um, I just thought we'd just show you how this works. Like it's, it's pretty cool because what it does is allow you to poke this shifter hole, shifter shaft straight up through the original um, sort of uh, slot for the shifter. They've just got a sort of a slot with a stick hanging out of it and some little fluffy bits to sort of fill in the gaps. And um, they do look relatively standard with just that poking through. It just this thing here sort of gives it away a bit, but it's it's a pretty cool way of doing it. And it integrates it into the car a lot better. So the shifter sort of sits inside here and drops down into the floor. This bolts into the original opening uh, that's in the floor. And then you just drill your shifter into it. So it's a pretty cool thing. Great to be able to get them off the shelf. Um, previously, it was like a fab your own job. So um, that's the kind of stuff that um, Tough Mounts and Muscle Car Garage do. Make stuff that makes it easier for us to mount things and Jason does a heap of cool stuff down there right? yeah. even those engine mounts he makes are great yeah I've got some of them coming for my my project don't give it away I'm not but I'm gonna use those engine mounts what are you doing David Avocado Wolf David who you know that guy who's that what are you calling me that for I don't know, you like natural things like taxidermy and plants what are you doing? Plugging in the remote. You, uh, you've been there for a long time, hey? <laughs> <laughs> Just well, saying. a wise man once told me how abrasive a uh, braid can be, so I don't want it touching on the wiring loom. He, so I've had to modify it a little he bit. He was right. He was right. So the oil pressure sensor we have remote mounted. Can't see anything, Captain. You can probably see it from down over this side. Right down in there because when you mount them, if you have them remotely, remotely mounted, they're less likely to break, according, less, according to the manufacturer. Less likely. We like less, look, look how good that rocker cover is. It does look nice, doesn't it? When I get my Nissan engine, I'm gonna paint my rocker covers that color. You like wrinkle red, don't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. I told you before, that's the only colour for an engine. Look at it go. It takes away all the other crappy bits of the engine bay and just makes you look at that red bit. when you need space for turbos and twin turbos and stuff like that. Having that um, more compact mount is a good thing. Twin turbos. Auto or manual? Hang on, let me just zoom. Auto or manual? <laughs> well, I was gonna go auto and Benny said I should go auto and then I said, no, nah, I think I'll put a manual in it now. And then he said, you should put an auto in it. And then I said, but you wouldn't let me put an auto in your stage here. This is a double standard. And uh, we're still arguing about it. But yeah, I think I'll go a manual. Make it into a bit of an all-rounder rather than just a drag vehicle. <laughs> 